Hello, and welcome to the Bio24 lecture on human evolution. We're going to start by talking about human evolution in the past, how humans, and specifically Homo sapiens, evolved. Then we'll talk about human migration across the globe, finishing off by looking into the future of human evolution and where we may be headed as a species. The first thoughts as to the evolutionary origin of humans, in that we came from apes, came out of Charles Darwin's book on the origin of species. In it, he really analyzed the evidence that we have for human existence and the evolution of the human species. And he applied what was known about evolution in other species to the human species itself. At the time, fossil evidence had supported connections between other animals that were known at the time. But nobody had looked at the evolution of human species. He applied this hypothesis of the connection and relationship of animals to each other to the human species. And based on fossil evidence and comparing anatomy, he then concluded that human beings may have descended from apes. Other scientists at the time took this idea up with mixed results. Some favored Charles Darwin's hypothesis, whereas others thought that it wasn't valid. The first fossil evidence for the connection between humans and apes wasn't found until the 1920s, almost 70 years after Charles Darwin proposed his idea of humans evolving from apes. At this time, anthropologists discovered a fossil, subsequently named Australopithecus africanus. The species was called Australopithecus because Australo means south, and Africanus, of course, for Africa. This fossil was discovered in South Africa. Australopithecus was a very early hominid. As we can see from this chart here, Australopithecus existed roughly five to four million years ago. Australopithecus africanus, you can see here, existed roughly three million years ago. The skull that you see in this image can show you that it still looked very much like an ape but did start taking on evidence of human anatomy. This is the Australopithecus rendering made from the fossil that was discovered in the 1920s. Brain marks inside the skull indicate that the brain was in fact fairly small, similar to apes at the time. But the structure of the brain became more rounded, like the human species is today. There's also evidence for bipedalism, or walking on two feet, which is why you see this rendering as an ape that walked on two feet. There is also evidence that the teeth became altered and evolved. The canine teeth, which are very predominant in ape species, became smaller. These are like your eye teeth today. The Australopithecus genus, then, appears to be a transitional form between apes and humans. The current scientific evidence is that Australopithecus is the immediate ancestor of the Homo species. Australopithecus gave rise to two different lineages. The Australopithecus genus evolved into the Homo genus and all its subsequent species, and the Paranthropus genus and all of its species. The Paranthropus genus lived for roughly two million years, which as we'll see, is much longer than the Homo sapien species itself. The Paranthropus genus lived roughly three million years ago to one million years ago before it ended up dying off completely as a lineage. That means that of the Australopithecus genus, the only lineage that remains alive today 
is the Homo genus. And within that, only the Homo sapiens species. Let's talk about the Homo genus. The Homo genus first started out with the very first species to evolve, Homo habilis. Homo habilis lived from 2.4 million years ago to 1.5 million years ago, roughly 1 million years. Homo habilis lived in tropical Africa, ate anything it could find, meaning it was a great omnivore, and also displayed some fossil evidence that it was able to generate and form tools and even domesticated fire. Out of Homo habilis evolved first Homo erectus. Homo erectus lived roughly the same time as Homo habilis, overlapping by a few hundred thousand years. Homo erectus lived 1.8 million years ago to 70,000 years ago, living in Africa and from there migrating to Europe and Asia. Homo erectus also ate anything it could find, being a great omnivore, plants, animals, insects, fungi, you name it. As you can see from these fossilized skulls, the forehead began to slope less and less, and the brain casing became more rounded and bigger. The teeth also became much smaller, an adaptation to allow Homo erectus to become more of an omnivore. Homo erectus did have a larger brain compared to its earlier ancestors, Homo habilis, but was still smaller than Homo sapiens' brain. It was only 75% or so the size of the brain of Homo sapiens. There's evidence that Homo erectus used and made tools similar to Homo habilis earlier, though the tools that they made were a little bit more complex and diverse. They also very likely were able to control fire, using fire for warmth in the evenings, allowing Homo erectus to move to Europe and Asia, especially in the colder climates, also allowing Homo erectus to cook food. This meant that there would be less disease in the species as a result of rotting meat or disease in the plants and animals that they ate. From Homo erectus evolved Homo neanderthalensis. These are the Neanderthals that you may have heard about before. Homo neanderthalensis is unique in that it evolved from Homo erectus in Europe and Asia. Homo neanderthalensis, the Neanderthal, was never found in Africa. It only existed in Europe and Asia. The Neanderthals were also unique in that they ate mostly meat. Yes, they were still omnivores, but a primary portion of their diet was for meat. There's evidence that the way Neanderthals hunted their prey is that they leapt on and clubbed their prey to death, which is a very dangerous activity, considering that many of their prey species were just as large, or if not larger, than the Neanderthal themselves. Their body structure was adapted to this hunting style and also to the cold climate. They were smaller in stature, had thicker bones, and more muscle. They also had larger brains than the typical human, meaning Neanderthals had bigger brains than Homo sapiens. Whether or not this means they were smarter is up for debate. We don't know this, but they did appear to have larger brains on average. They also used tools much like their earlier ancestors and controlled fire. There's also evidence that they may have had the capacity to speak because much like our species, they have bones for speaking in their throat and vocal cords and they also have bones in their ear to allow for listening to very fine-tuned pitches that may have allowed them to hear and understand speech. 
They also constructed shelters for themselves, not just living in caves, but also shelters that they made themselves from plant and animal materials. There's evidence that they skinned and wore animal skins, likely to protect themselves from the cold of Asia and Europe where they lived. And even more interestingly, Neanderthals also appeared to exhibit ritualistic burying of the dead with goods. This indicates to some anthropologists that Neanderthals actually might have thought that there might be an afterlife, after death. Did Neanderthals have religion? We don't know. But they did bury some of their dead with very important items that they themselves could still use. And why would they do this? There's also evidence that Neanderthals painted art along the cave walls. This is something that we see in these images here. The way Neanderthals would have created this is putting a hand up on the wall of a cave, chewing some berries, and spitting out the pigments on the wall of the cave, leaving just their handprint behind. There seems to be no real purpose for this, no communication of where prey might be located or how to hunt properly or any other useful information, leading some anthropologists to consider that maybe this was art for art's sake, which is even more fascinating that Neanderthals would have exhibited this kind of behavior. Evidence indicates that Neanderthals went extinct about 25,000 years ago, which when you think about it, isn't that long ago. They probably went extinct as a result of two different activities. One, as a result of inbreeding with Homo sapiens, as there are some people still alive today with DNA from Homo neanderthalensis, but also as a result of fighting with Homo sapiens, as there's evidence of some bone matter from Neanderthals that have marks from tools and weapons fashioned by Homo sapiens. Homo neanderthalensis lived from 300,000 years ago to 25,000 years ago, a relatively short period of time compared to its earlier ancestors. And the only remaining Homo species left is Homo sapiens, which seem to have wiped out Homo neanderthalensis by inbreeding and fighting. We're going to talk about them next. <laughs>